guess where my mic is. Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful to see you this morning. Special welcome to our guests and visitors that are joining us today. So glad you could join us for worship. We especially give thanks as we welcome the family of Mackenzie Hellman, who will be baptized this morning. We give thanks as we welcome a new sister in Christ. A couple of quick announcements for you this morning. Next Sunday, we have a bunch of things going on. It is First Communion Sunday, where our youth will be having their first communion. And if you have a youth and they did not go to class Last week, there was a makeup class right after church uh, today with Katie, so uh, please attend that class. Also, next Sunday is our annual meeting, which will happen right after worship ends, about 10 o'clock. And also, next Sunday, we have um, a Winter Family Fest, our annual um, outdoor um, winter fun day, where we're going to be having uh, kids pulled on sleds around the property and on four-wheelers. We're going to have games and food and all sorts of stuff, so we invite you to join us for that. Uh, next Sunday. That's from 2 to 4.30. Also, a um, reminder, if you do need an annual report for next week's annual meeting, they're on the table in the narthex. And on that same table is order forms for our Super Bowl pizzas, which we'll be making on February 13th. Um, uh, yeah, a reminder that, again, the Super Bowl is a week later. I keep forgetting that every week. Um, and not that my team's ever in the Super Bowl, so, like, why does it matter to me? Uh, but uh, um, all of the proceeds of our Super Bowl uh, uh, pizzas go to our youth going to Bible camp this summer. Uh, those are our announcements for this morning, and I invite you to please stand and turn to page 95 in the red hymnal for our brief order of confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please note that we'll be on the right side of the page, on page 95. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. we confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, number 556, in your red hymnal, number 556.
invite you to turn to the prayer of the day as printed in your bulletin. Let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading this morning comes from Jeremiah, the first chapter. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy. For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over the nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning comes from Psalm 71, verses 1 through 6. We will be reading the psalm by half verse. The psalms can be found after page 338 and before the hymns. You all will be reading the indented portion. Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ears to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my friend and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked. From the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God. My confidence is as I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part, but when the complete comes, the portal partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith Hope and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel comes from the fourth chapter of Luke, beginning with the 21st verse. Then Jesus began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. 
All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, doubtless you will quote, me, quote to me this proverb, doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Seraphath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elijah, and none of them were cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built, so they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated, and the children may come forward for a children's sermon. Come on up here. Come here, Coley. Good morning, everyone. Come on up here. There's plenty of room over here. Come on up. I don't bite, I promise. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you all. All right. A very important question for you all. How many of you like to play board games, or video games, and you all out there can answer too. How many of you like to play board games, card games, video games? Yeah, lots of you. So have you ever been playing a game where you were doing really well, and then all of a sudden you weren't? Like you were winning, you were so far ahead of everyone else, and then all of a sudden you were losing? How many of you have been there? Yeah? Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. I don't like that when that happens. I get really frustrated. I'm a really competitive game player. And so I get really frustrated when I've been doing really well and winning, and then all of a sudden, someone's winning, and somehow I'm losing. I get really frustrated. So in today's gospel, we hear about Jesus, who is going back to his hometown to preach and teach. All right, so he's teaching everyone. He's preaching in his home synagogue. And he was doing well. People were really liking what he was saying. They were really into it. They were right there with him. And then Jesus said something that they didn't like. And what do you think happened? They got mad. They got really mad and really frustrated to the point where they wanted to drive him out of town. They wanted him to just go away because they didn't like what he was saying. So do you know what Jesus did? Any guesses? Do you think that Jesus decided to let that bother him and let that affect him? No. Nope. He went on his way. He said, there are things that I have to do that God has sent me to do to teach others, to teach the men, women, children, everybody that I meet, and I'm not going to let that bother me. I'm going to go on my way, and I'm going to do what I've been called to do, which is to teach about love, to teach about all the good things and the gifts that God gives us, and I'm not going to let what other people say get me down. All right? So I encourage you to do the same, because there are going to be times where we get down, right? There are going to be times when we get frustrated with something, or we might want to give up, but remember that we keep going and we do the best we can, and that God is with us every step of the way to make sure we have what we need. All right? Will you pray with me? And I want you to repeat after me nice and loud, okay? Can you do that? All right. Dear God, Dear God we love you so much. We love you so much. Thank, you Thank you for sending Jesus, for sending Jesus. to be with us and teach us and remind us to never give up. In your name we pray. Ah. Ah. Amen. All right, you can come 
get candy one to keep and one to Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So this happened, I think, at least 10 years ago or more. But during the big Pickle Fest Sunday parade, we had our regular float in the parade. And we tried to decide to do something a little different this year. We decided to hand out Freezy Pops. You know, those lawn things, you put them in the freezer and you cut them open and everybody loves them. We thought it'd be kind of fun to hand them out with a caveat that we'd, we would target kids we didn't know, right? They're for the kids and kids we didn't know, a little outreach. And so we had the float ready and me and another member had two coolers filled with these freezy pops and we started walking next to the float. It became very apparent very quickly that this was a very bad idea. A very bad idea. Um, and mostly because not too long after we started going, the, the float went much faster than we could walk. So, you know, we're trailing behind, you know, trying to catch up to the float while handing stuff out. And at the same time, I looked over at one point and to my partner, and they were surrounded with people out in the middle of the street, just surrounding with their hands out. And I had a decent amount of people, but all of a sudden this guy came up and asked for a freezy pot. I said, I'm sorry, uh, these are for, for kids. They're, we're not giving them to adults. He was not happy. <laughs> Let's just say he called me a couple of words that normally pastors are not called, except for under your breath at the ends of sermons. We know how that, that goes. And I thought to myself, this guy is angry over a freezy pop? It's a freezy pop. It's like 10 cents, you know, go, go to Senex, get some freezy pops and you're good. Well, then I thought about it a little bit more. He was mad because something was being handed out and he thought he deserved it. And when he didn't get what he wanted, he threw a fit. Have, have you ever done that? We know your children have done that, I'm sure. Right? There, he's angry because he thinks he deserves something and he doesn't get it. And that's what's going on in Nazareth when Jesus comes to his hometown. He's just come from being tempted in the wilderness for 40 days, 40 nights, comes to his hometown, comes to the hometown synagogue, like the church, and comments on the scriptures, basically gives a little sermon slash Bible study. And it's going well. People are like, wow, he's, he's really awesome. Look at him. This carpenter's son is making us proud. It says, all speak well of him. And then very quickly it turns. Why? Because Jesus basically tells them, hey, you might have heard I did some miracles over in that town over there. I'm not doing that here. And they wanted miracles. They wanted water into wine. They wanted to see the blind to see. They wanted demons uh, to be removed. But Jesus wasn't going to do any of that. And these people in Nazareth thought they had special status. Jesus' hometown, of course, in his hometown, he's not only going to do what he did in the town over there, he's going to do even more because we're special, we're important. We grew up with him. He's been 30 years old. His whole life has been here. And they almost throw him off a cliff. They're so mad. There are times when we act like that as Christians. Sometimes we feel like because we are disciples of Jesus Christ, that we have some sort of special status that makes us better than our neighbors. And most especially should mean that in life, nothing should ever go wrong. That we should never have any difficulties at all. That somehow by being a follower of Jesus Christ, it keeps us immune from suffering, from experience loss in our life, from pain in our life. 
Now, Jesus doesn't promise that. Jesus doesn't say, follow me and everything will be great and you'll have all the money in the world and all the fame and all the things that you want. Sadly, there are a lot of television preachers out there that like to say that exact same thing. But Jesus says stuff like this. Love your neighbor. Love your enemies. Care for the children and the poor. Take up your cross and follow me. We don't like that stuff as much. That stuff that removes our focus from ourselves and means our focus should be on other people, even especially people that we don't like or want to associate with. And we start acting a lot like those people in Nazareth. We get angry at God. We think we deserve more. But you know what the Lord does promise us? The Lord promises us forgiveness of sins. The Lord promises us to carry our burdens when we do suffer. The Lord promises to be with us always. The Lord promises to bring us to eternal life when we die. And guess what? We don't deserve any of that. We don't deserve any of that because we sin against our Lord and against each other. And yet we receive it anyways through this thing called grace, this free gift given to you and to me, not because we've earned it or deserve it, but because God loves us. This love that is spoken about in 1 Corinthians, which is the all-time wedding scripture and actually has nothing to do with romantic love. It is all about God's love for you and the love that you should bear for your neighbor. A love that believes and hopes all things. That's the gift that we receive, a gift we don't even deserve. And that sometimes we forget about. Sometimes we take for granted. Sometimes we look to our own selfish interest instead of the interest of our neighbor, instead of the interest of the poor and the needy. Because after all, despite our best efforts, we aren't going to follow God the way that God wants us to. We are going to sin and fall short of the glory of God, yet Jesus comes anyways. Jesus saves us anyways. Jesus is there for us anyways. It does not matter what Mackenzie will do for her entire life. For her entire life, Jesus will love her for her, will die for her, will bring her to eternal life. And the same is true for all of you. Sometimes in life, sometimes here in our faith, Instead of worrying about what our status is, instead of thinking to ourselves that we are better than our neighbor because we follow Jesus, we should actually follow Jesus and give of our time and our talents and our love to others so they would know God's love so that they would have the hope and strength that we've received so that they would know that no matter what, Somebody is there for them. Somebody hears them. And when they do suffer, somebody will be there to give them strength and relief and hope and new life. Because that's been given to you and to me. For that, we can say thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to please stand as we sing our hymn number 502 in the red hymnal 502.
The congregation may be seated as the baptismal family comes forward, and I invite you to turn in your bulletin to the page that says Sacrament of Holy Baptism. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Who presents this child for holy baptism? In Christian love, you have presented this child for holy baptism. You should faithfully bring her to the service of God's house and teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. As she grows in years, you should place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and provide for instruction in the Christian faith, that the living in the covenant of her baptism and in communion with the Church, she may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. Do you promise to fulfill these obligations? If so, answer by saying, I do. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. By the gift of water you nourish and sustain us and all living things. By the waters of the flood you condemned the wicked and saved those whom you have chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by the pillar of cloud and fire through the sea, out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your son has set us free from sin and death and has opened the way to the joy and freedom of everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. By his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your spirit so that she who is here baptized may be given new life. Wash away her sin by the water, and bring her forth as an inheritor of your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise, and honor, and worship, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I ask you to confess your faith in Jesus Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. To renounce the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises, if so, answer by saying, I do. Will the congregation please rise to confess the faith? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and of the life of everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. All right, if you want to put Mackenzie's head up right here. Mackenzie Rose, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, you can lift her up. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and raising them up to new life through this holy sacrament. Pour your Holy Spirit upon them, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. All right, have her face me here. 
child of God, <laughs> sealed by the Holy Spirit, and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. On this day, every year, we hope that you will light this candle in remembrance of Mackenzie's baptism and as a symbol of the light of Christ, which will always shine within her. And so let your light shine before others that may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. Can, can I trust him with that? All right. I do at Christmas. I guess that's true. But you were there to help him, though. That's the thing. Baby steps. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all life, look upon the parents of this child. Make them teachers and examples of faith for their child. Strengthen them in their faith so that they may share eternally with their child the salvation you have given them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome this new sister in Christ. We welcome you into the Lord's family and into the mission we share, giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. In honor of this occasion, the women of Trinity have made this blanket as a symbol of the love of God in Jesus Christ, which will always wrap around Mackenzie. Let us by acclamation welcome our new sister in Christ, Mackenzie Rose Hellman. You can head on back. Here's the um, for that. And I invite the congregation to please stand for prayer. Drawn to the light of Christ, made bold in the waters of baptism and filled with the Spirit, we lift up our prayers in confidence that God loves and listens to us. Loving God. Sustain your church, strengthen its leaders and all the baptized. Put your word in our mouths and fill us with the courage to proclaim it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, sustain the nations of the world. Bring peace where there is strife and warfare. Make clear the reflection of you in the faces of our enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, sustain those who are hurting tired, sick, or suffering, especially those on our prayer list and those in our hearts. Sustain those who are poor, hungry, or homeless. Grant your blessing to those who minister and care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, sustain this congregation. Renew our ministries with a sense of purpose and passion. Bless our partners in ministry and let your spirit lead us in our work together. Lord, in your mercy. God of hope, sustain those who grieve as you sustain all the saints who now sit at your table in heaven. Nourish us with your grace until we are reunited at your table. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share God's peace in whatever manner you feel is most comfortable, and then we'll have our offering.
please rise and turn to him 801. pray together our offertory prayer. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now hear the word of the Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray the prayer our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Come now, the table is set, and our Lord Jesus Christ invites you to come receive the gifts of God for you, the people of God, the body of Christ, broken for you, the blood of Christ, poured out for you. Grape juice is in the center of the tray, and his white gluten-free bread is available upon request. If you are uncomfortable coming forward to communion, the usher who will be dismissing pews has all in one communion that you can uh, receive in your pew. Come and receive God's gifts for you. You may be seated.
I invite you to please stand. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace until life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you have cakewalk tickets, you can pull those tickets out now as Cora comes forward. We thank you for supporting our youth gathering youth. We're going to have three drawings, and this is how it's going to go. It's going to be a free-for-all. You three winners, you got to figure it out. Whoever gets to the table first gets the kind first, all right? So if you really want the Danish, you better get there. If you really want the apple, I don't know, shove the other one out of your way. I don't know. We'll try to be neighbor. All right, Cora, you want to draw the first one for us? They don't trust me sometimes, you know. Four, five, two, two, three, nine. Four, five, two, two, three. All right, we got one right over there. All right, Karen, you get to pick because, by the way, everybody say happy birthday to Karen. It was her birthday yesterday. Happy birthday yesterday, Karen. All right. Our second one. Four, five, two, two, nine, six. Me. Julie Fisher. Hey, hey, Karen, if you go in there, watch Julie Bites, okay? You got to be careful. <laughs> She's willing to do whatever it takes. <coughs> All right. And our last one, 452201. Two, right over there. All right. Congratulations. Very good. Thank you all again for supporting our youth. We conclude our worship with hymn 547. 547. <laughs>